I'm Jess. I'm Piper. I'm Chris. And we are Coffee and Scream. Okay, well, it feels good to be back. We have not recorded in like a month. Solid month. No. Like you, yeah, you went on vacation. Then I went to Iowa. Then I was sick. then I was sick. Uh-huh. Yep. Then we went to go see the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. So. Oh my god! Yeah, we'll get into that later if you if yeah. you're interested. Yeah, but, uh, it was it was a nice mm-hmm. nice little break. Yeah, and then we had Halloween. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Yes, um, I dressed up. What did you dress as? I dressed up as Calendar Girl from Batman the Animated Series. She, Ooh. She's like a standalone villain, but she was like a like a famous fashion model, and then she turned 30, and then the industry was like, you're ugly now, so then she turned <laughs> evil. Sounds, yeah, yeah, women. sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. Guys, once you're 30, it's over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pack it up, honey. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I had a collapse. Oh, I think I'm still scared. I think I still have body tremors from that five minutes of Freddy movie. Microphone down. Microphone down. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. Um, uh, Let's see here. Uh, Yes, I went to Iowa. That was a lot of fun. I went on a. I was on a plane by myself. Not the first time though, right? No, not one plane, but multiple. I went on. Yeah, I had a layover both ways. I had to navigate an airport by myself. I put on my bravest face, and I felt. Like a bad bitch. And you came back in one piece. I did. Magical. I did. And yeah. And I had the, the lovely man sitting down the table from me. He came and picked me up from the airport because he's such a good friend. I was Aww. like, who? <laughs> and then I, I, oh, yeah, it was <laughs> yeah, me. It was you. It was that, you. Was, that was so traumatic that I don't even like, want to. I'll I know. tell you what, dude. Because there was an episode of Seinfeld where they're like, you're going to the airport. And were they like, talking about Newark, though? I don't remember. About, yeah. It could have been because it, it takes place in New York. But uh, yeah, that was something else. Because the signs and the rain and the dark. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was a whole like trifecta of like shit for you. I like, was, it was chin bad. steering wheel like grumpy he old was, men. He drove like 50 miles per hour on the Garden State Parkway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone like, was passing me. Oh, my God. I saw a smart well, car um, pass me. <laughs> well, well, the second time we went to Disney with my dad and everything. Um, we took my car because I had the biggest car at the time and everything. And, the Soul? Um, yeah. Big ass Soul. My car. The biggest yeah. car because my sister. got a my, Fiat? My, <laughs> big ass Soul. <laughs> big ass <laughs> Yeah. Big ass Soul. Big ass Soul. <laughs> yeah. So you're driving a big ass Soul. <laughs> yes. Okay. And, and we were driving to the airport to like get to Florida. Um, and, and, and like at like five in the morning and it was still dark. It was up in like rural Jersey where uh-huh. all the woods are and everything. Trucks and, my, and billboards. And, and my sister starts screaming Wendigo over and over again. And my brother's like, stop, stop. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah. I, I forget who it was, but someone someone in the last couple months, I said it and they were like, don't do that. And I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't well, think there was a actually, Candyman thing going well, on with that. Well, actually, it's okay to say Wendigo. You just can't say like the <laughs> actual name for it. Like, What's the actual name? I, I don't know. Can you write it out for me? I, I don't. Yeah, I'll know do my what pencil noise. Is, but like, <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. But yeah, it feels good to be back. You know, oh yeah. Just been hanging around home, just you know, bumming with the devil. Yeah, bumming with the devil. <laughs> oh, and if you oh, guys, yeah. um, if you want to see my costume, you can go to twitch.tv forward slash Wonder Time Theater for the Halloween special live pumpkin carving. Ooh. Yeah. Sounds yes. rad. Thanks for the. Uh, yes. Oh my god. Woo! Woo! No, but it was uh, it was Let's a great go. time. I th- great time. just punched like my microphone. <laughs> Did you tap in to tune in? It was a short show. It was a short show. Don't I'm not I, bothered. No, because I'm. Oh, I did. I did. I was yeah. passing out candy with my mom, so unfortunately, I did not. But I'll. But, but real if nice. Are, but if you archive the episodes, I'll, yeah. I'll watch it. Archive this. <laughs> It's a, middle, yeah. it's a middle finger for too. all the audio viewers. <laughs> You're so sweet. Yes. Uh, but, the- but my Halloween was great, and I had a great time, and I had a great month, and uh, I drew a lot, and yeah. Oh, yeah. it was a great time. Well, that's like my favorite time of year. Like, mm-hmm. I love Halloween, mm-hmm. you know, but like if the weather is getting colder and um, a lifestyle, I just want to be like all tangled up in plaid fl- like flannels. And I have so many of those pajama yeah. bottoms. I get like eight every Christmas. Those yeah. like classic blue and black flannel pajamas. 
You know, mm-hmm. you can rip, you, who cares if you rip them? You can fucking have 20 more. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, it's so cold though in here today. I love it. Did, have we watched anything like good? Recently? I watched Cape Fear. Ooh. Well, I don't think that was based on a real case, but a guy goes to jail. He's an actual, he's a real criminal mm-hmm. and he really did what he's being convicted of. Mm-hmm. But the, his lawyer at the time withheld evidence that would have had him acquitted. Is that when you get out acquitted? Yes. Mm-hmm. And he, he like his conscience trumped like his oath that he made as a lawyer. Mm-hmm. So he puts De Niro away for 14 years where he learns to read. He learns to write. He learns his rights. And he also finds the fucking old Testament mm-hmm. gets out of prison and tracks down the lawyer and starts terrorizing the family. And it was a fucking nutty movie. It was great. I watched it was a-, a movie that was like kind of, a lot like that. It was Clerks 3. Oh, it's, <laughs> honestly, it's a shot for shot remake it's, uh, yeah. of Cape Fear. Yeah. yeah. But I recommend Cape Fear. Go watch it. And it is a remake mm-hmm. of his 1963, I believe, movie. But uh, a great crime thriller. Scorsese fucking knocks it out of the park. And, uh, Ooh, that's my type of speed. And he's fucking weird in that. He, like, it's the only movie Ooh, I've really seen that. him use an accent. He has like this country bumpkin, illiterate, <laughs> scumbag piece of shit way of talking. Um, and yeah. I watched Donnie Darko for the first time yesterday. That's a great what? Movie too. Yes. Oh, you were there. That's awesome. You, you, you probably yes. listening to the thing, your headphones before, because yeah. you were talking about it. Yeah, I was. She was busy typing up the the last. The I was. I was doing I. things. You were prepping. God. You were prepping. But it was really good. I, like I, th- I think the bunny suit design is like really cool and everything. Mm-hmm. I really, I, I like. It took me a second to understand the ending, and I kind of had to like go look for a Reddit post to, that like kind of explained it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I was just like. Because like honestly, I'm a little stupid, <laughs> and, no, and I was yeah, on I, and I was on my phone kind of, but um, but it was really good and like the like whole CGI with the portals and like everything yeah, was like the so wormhole cool. when he's yeah. walking to the party. Yeah, literally. Um, the iconic skeleton suit. Yes. Yeah, dude. Yes. Uh, and like I I think it's awesome that they had uh both jill and hall siblings in it because yeah, uh, like what's the other what's your maggie name? maggie because maggie. uh because like they, they got the sibling dynamic down perfectly and, that, and that's because night. they're siblings in real life <laughs> and everything but yeah. like it, it was just like so funny and the, the, the one scene at the table where their little sister is like what's a fuck ass like <laughs> oh yeah yeah you could suck a fuck <laughs> You ever see the Family Guy bit where it's like uh, Jake and Maggie at a dinner table and they're like, I'm a better actor. No, I'm a better actor. No. And the father walks in and he's like, guys, guys, you're both just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking kills me. Oh. But yeah, I, I like Donnie Darko. And S. Darko, the sequel, my first, is okay. My first Jake Gyllenhaal movie was the Zodiac Killer movie. Oh, yeah, the Zodiac. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was, and mm-hmm. then, like the guy you see in everything, the guy toward the end where mm-hmm. he has that feeling like that's the Zodiac. Mm-hmm. The guy with like the bald head, and, like, yeah. his hair on the sides. You see that guy in so much shit, but he he plays like a, just a great fucking shifty guy mm-hmm. that you know, he just can't fully trust. He's like Michael Caine. He's in fucking everything. Michael Caine. <laughs> Ruby's the size of tangerines. <laughs> Alfred Pennyworth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yes, uh, mm-hmm. what's tonight's fucking topic again? Lizzie Borden. Yes. Well, finally. Yeah. Yes. Lizzie Borden. Um, Step right up. What do you think it's about? That's, yeah. I want to hear what you think went down in this case. Yeah. And then we will tell the story because the whole John Bonet thing, like, it still cracks me up. So. The, what I thought was going on? <laughs> yeah. Like, in a, like, in a, like, John Bonet. Not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So, so, cause this is my place on the show. Like, I don't look into too much true crime stuff, and it's interesting when I get to come here and listen to two people who are passionate about it. And I learn, I mean, the arms cut off episode. That still, still? that still gets to me. I'm so wow. happy I have both my arms. Her arms were cut off. Yeah. Her legs were cut off. No, no they weren't. No, they were. Her no, legs no. were not cut off. Oh, but, but yeah, I'm sure someone <laughs> oh, on the show. But we'll we'll get into the torso murder. Like, yeah. Sure. So this this comes down to what I know about Lizzie Borden. Okay. I know there was an axe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know there was wallpaper, like of old, dingy kind of hotel, with small rooms. Well, because that was the 1800s. Okay, that's the time period. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember seeing like, like wallpaper and carpet, mm-hmm. yeah. and like a, every. It's, I remember rooms with like a uh, like a pool table color, like a felt mm. green. Were there black and white pictures or were there color pictures? They were black and white. But right, they so, like, they redid the house to kind of look like it did back then. then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so all I know is there's an axe, there's mm-hmm. a lady, mm-hmm. and she's a maid, 
Is she a maid? There's a maid. Of, yeah. yeah. Oh, there is a maid. There, there is, is a maid. maid. All right. That's about it. That's, That's all I know. it? I swear to God. That's not it. Anything. Mm-hmm. I don't even know where this happened. I just know it was in a house. At least something with a roof house of a hotel. A structure, if you will. Something structure, with yeah. a roof. <laughs> yeah, it was a... Uh, a dwelling. It was yeah. a dwelling. How, so how am I doing? <laughs> you know. uh b minus <laughs> wow oh, I would, you know, yeah on a scale from like one to ten you probably know about a four okay. yeah i'm interested yeah so uh let's see here oh right and we're flip-flopping yeah you know, i'm yeah well yeah. you know the whole thing with lizzie borden is this is such a famous case mm. but there's also a lot of lore behind it mm-hmm. there's a lot of uh paranormal things mm-hmm. really? that are yeah, yeah. is pearl so, uh, tied up in this no no okay. i just saw um, a woman with like, an axe i was like you te- oh, i know you're like i need to watch pearl i'm like i'm just gonna just step right over that comment so, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like i don't i don't want to be like that has nothing to do with this <laughs> no, but, no 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 but per- actually though i do like pearl i like pearl mm-hmm. better than x so. so these so we're like it's like the amityville episode yeah uh, but it's, it's like a like a yeah we're gonna talk about two yeah. different kinds of, of things here all right, so yep. let's get in our way back machine and go to. Thank you. That's my machine. Awesome. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. It tickles. Oh, it's nice here. Oh my god! I can't believe it's 1879. I know. <laughs> what year? What year is this tickling? Uh, this is 1892. Okay. So we're we are gonna time. go to Fall River, Massachusetts, in August of 1892. Now, first of all, that sounds fucking miserable. Like. Not only that, like wearing head to t- like the big ass dresses, but there's no air conditioning. Imagine I com- the smell. Uh, I complain as it is now. Like, could you imagine? Would- I'd be killed. The big like, shut this stinks. bitch well, up. You know those like big like scarfs that most of the men are seen like wearing in the old timey pictures. Yeah. Like the white ones, they would have flowers in them so that like, it- and that would act as like a form of deodorant. So like they didn't smell as Go bad. Go to the river and just wash yourself. Yeah. Literally like, though. Like, like that's my thing. I'd be always in that river. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, be I'd, be a, I'd be a mer lady. Yeah, like, you gotta a come over here and talk to me. I'm not getting out of this water. Yeah. I'm sorry, I fucking stay They'd be like, clean. oh, there's a, there's, yeah, I'd be like a legend. I'd be like, oh, it's, who's a scary lady that hangs out at the creek? <laughs> just me, because I don't want to be smelling. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it, yeah. But even with like fucking households, like they would just heat up a pot of water, oh, yeah. pour it in the tub, well, and then like, that whole that, family like, would have whole, a dip. No, the idiom thing comes like, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. It means because by the time the baby got a bath, the bath water was so dirty. How, babe, would, how dirty could a baby think, be? Do it first. Do the cleanest ones first. I don't know. All right, anywho. <laughs> like, and then do the black, you know what I'm saying? You're yeah. going to do the worst, the fucking guy I covered in know. shit first? Yeah. 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 Okay. But, uh, <laughs> so we're in Fall River, Massachusetts. It's early August in 1892. And on 92nd Street, that's where the Borden family lived. Mm-hmm. The family consisted of Andrew Borden and his wife, Abigail, who is also known as Abby. As mm-hmm. well as 32-year-old daughter Lizzie and her sister Emma, who was 10 years older than her. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and they also had a maid, Bridget Sullivan, who was an Irish immigrant. Lizzie and Emma's biological mother, Sarah, had died when Lizzie was just two and Emma was 12. And Andrew married Abby um, around the time Lizzie turned five. And the Borden girls, they were never really warm with their stepmother, um, they often just refer to her as Mrs. Borden, like her, kind of, just like, yeah, just her. They call her that. It's like it's like it's like when the son's on a first name basis with his dad. That's weird. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The, Bridget, like, the the maid Bridget was like she would later testify like the girls never really like ate dinner with the the family or anything like they really just kept it separate. Yeah. Um. Since Abby was over 30 and she wasn't really in the best financial shape when she met Andrew, like, getting married to him was pretty much, like, sealed her security for the rest of her life. Like, it was, she would be taken care of. And Andrew needed a wife. Like, he needed a, a mother for his two young daughters. So it was just a marriage of convenience. Was not... he widowed? Yes. Okay. So it they, they weren't, like, in love or anything. It was just, just like, kinda like, like yeah. hey, you wanna? Yeah. Please. Like, yeah. Okay. Would you like to form an alliance with yeah, me? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely, I would. Okay. <laughs> yes. All righty. So, uh, let's see. Andrew, like, he, while he was wealthy and he did have a lot of wealthy family members, he was very frugal. Mm-hmm. And, Yes, like, I remember that. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. And, like, 
like Lizzie and Emma, like they were like, we could probably like we probably should have like electricity and like you know indoor plumbing. And he's mm-hmm. like, absolutely not. You will use kerosene lanterns and because because be wasn't it. Lizzie's whole thing like she wanted to live on like a house on the hill and yes, everything. Yes, that was where like the like the fashionable society yeah. lived and like, but like she felt yeah like she yeah. felt like shit. I'm gonna, like, yeah. Um, like, he, yeah, he was also known as, like, a very, like, he wasn't the warmest human being. He was kind of a dick. Cold. Yes, but Lizzie and, you know, she Weren't had a lot of love. all men of that time kind of like that, though? Eh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, like, she loved her father. She respected him. But she still, like, was, you know, with the stepmother, she's like, mm, that bitch. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the fact that he was such a cheapskate and all this stuff kind of, like, could have been a motive. You just kept saving all his acorns. Like, that's he why just, he's, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. Na, 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 na. Took saving yeah. for a rainy day. A yeah, well, he would give her, like, he would give Lizzie, like, a small allowance. Mm-hmm. Not really enough to really buy anything. And she was, like, she had a habit of shoplifting. <laughs> like, she would go into town or go into a store and, like, people would be like, oh, like, there's Lizzie. Like, she's gonna steal I remember shit. That, Let's go, Winona. I remember that in the movie with Christina Ritchie as her. Like, like she steals something and then, yeah. like, and then, like, Andrew Borden had to, like, basically, like, put it on his tab or whatever. Well, that's whatever. what they would do. They yeah. would just kind of, like, they would bill her father and he would just pay for it. Yeah. Easy pass. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the final straw in, like, the relationship between Lizzie and her stepmother that really sent it crumbling was that Andrew gifted a house to his wife, Abby, and she in turn let her sister move in. And mm-hmm. Abby and or no, Lizzie and Emma were like, well, what the fuck? Like, hello? Yeah. You got fucking two sisters. Yeah. And it was pretty well known in town, though, that Lizzie and her stepmother did not get along. Mm-hmm. Um, Lizzie occupied her time by volunteering at church and she was a Sunday school teacher. And she was she 30 at the time of this? She was 32. Oh, 32. Okay. And... Because she was a wealthy girl, it was kind of unheard of for someone like her to volunteer their time and, you know, Mm -hmm. in the church and all that. Um, But she was looked at as like a spinster, though, because she was in her 30s and not married. Um, Spinster. She was. Like, that was, that's what they (laughs) called her. Where did that come from? I don't know. Not to derail it, but it sounds dirty. There's a lot of spinsters. It sounds dirty. There's a lot of spinsters. Like a spin in the block a little. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. We just yeah. call them barflies. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call them? Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll hear it later. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not, it's, it was stupid. Okay. Let's, let's move on. Nothing you say is stupid. It, it, I don't know about Just that. kidding. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Mom. Okay, let's see. So a few months before the murders, actually someone broke into the Borden house and took $50 like in cash and some of Abby's jewelry which was located on the second floor in Abby's desk. That's all that was taken. So it's kind of like... They knew where it was at. It was an inside job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, you know... I think it was one of the sisters. uh, Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fucking bitch. After... (laughs) Fuck you. I'm taking this. After a couple weeks of investigating the theft, Andrew, uh, he called the police and told them, like, yeah, don't... You know what? Just forget it. Don't look. Don't you? Know, it's it's just it's let it go. It's replaceable. Just let it go. Which means like he probably knew it was probably Lizzie, and yeah. he's like, mm-hmm. he's cutting his losses. I'm gonna protect her. He's probably like, this is gonna cost more money if I fucking get these cops to look around. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. But after the theft, he did insist though on keeping every door in the house locked, and he had a master key that he would leave on the mantle, like out in the open, basically as like a taunt, like I fucking dare you. Yeah. Try it. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. You'll it's see a what fake happens. Key. Yeah. Go. But nothing in the house was ever taken again. So the last few days of August, um, no, the first few days of August, sorry, the entire family actually had taken ill with like some stomach trouble. And they, uh, Lizzie confided in a friend that day that she was worried that her family was being poisoned. Like, huh, yeah, mm. like, no one feels good. They're, they're most definitely probably being poisoned. Mm. It's like, maybe don't say that. Yeah. Um, like, 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 why do you only think that? Yeah. Like, only you. Like, like, like Lizzie, many, no one many, would ever think that. How what? many years after the theft were, was everyone getting, like... Months. Like, two months. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, on the evening of August 3rd, the family was joined by John Morse, who was Andrew's first wife, Sarah's brother. So, Lizzie and Emma's biological uncle. Mm-hmm. Um, He came to visit the family and attend to some business in town. He slept in the guest room, and the next morning he had breakfast with the family. 
Um, Lizzie was not in attendance at the breakfast because, like I said, she didn't want to hang out with her parents. Mm-hmm. Emma Borden, Lizzie's sister, she was out of town visiting some friends. So at breakfast, it was just John, Abby, Andrew, and the maid Bridget. John Morse left the Borden home after breakfast to go visit relatives and buy some oxen, as one does. You know. Andrew left the house around 9 a.m. to attend business at his bank, and Mrs. Borden advised the maid Bridget to wash the windows from inside and out. Um... Mrs. Borden then went upstairs. She began to tidy up the guest room. And according to forensics, this is when uh, she is attacked from the front. She gets a blow to right above her ear, which caused her to turn and fall face down onto the carpet. And then she is hit 18 more times in the back of the head. And this is the maid. This is Mrs. Borden. This is Abby. The stepmom that the stepmom. Okay, okay. Lizzie and Emma don't the, get along with. The stepmom with. told the maid to just start washing windows. And she yeah, she's like, go wash windows. I'm going to go upstairs. And, and get bludgeoned. And, you know, tidy yeah. up the go, guest I'm room. I'm going to go upstairs and get pounded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pound town time, it's baby. It's pound town, yeah. Uh, not, not in that way, though. <laughs> no, <Jesus laughs> they know. Christ. They know. Piper. <laughs> Piper's like thinking it seriously. Like, yeah, no. That's not what happened. Come on. <laughs> okay, so Andrew came home at 1030. He couldn't get into the house because it was locked from the inside. Um, the maid, Bridget, comes down and lets him inside. And she, at that time, says she hears you know Lizzie laughing from upstairs. Now, if Lizzie was upstairs laughing, she would have noticed her stepmother dead on the floor. But we don't know. Well, it's assuming that she was walking around upstairs. What if she was just in the same room? If she was in the same room. Well, not the same room went- as the dead body. The same room as it just maybe she didn't never left the room. But the only I don't two, know. The only two people upstairs apparently were uh-huh. Abigail and Lizzie. Yeah. You know, and where'd the maid go? Like, did the maid the start maid... with the downstairs windows? She went to go she let Mister probably... Mister Borden well, in, she... right? Yeah, yeah. So she was downstairs. She could have been downstairs, or I don't, I don't know. What if she was sick of washing the windows I wasn't and she's there. like, "This fucking bitch is dead." <laughs> and and you know, ask me to clean maybe, the windows. Maybe it wasn't even a hatchet. Maybe it was like a, a what are the a squeegee? <laughs> <laughs> the fucking squeegee, yeah. That's why it took 18 times to kill her. The windex, the windex <laughs> bottle. <laughs> yeah, big ass soul. That's fucked. Jesus. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Andrew asked Lizzie where her stepmother was, and Lizzie said that Abby had received a note from a sick friend and went out for a visit. Mm. Yeah, no. Um. Got a note from a sick friend? Yeah. So like, like a fucking pigeon? How like like I guess like yeah, the male give pers- this to my friend. Yeah. <laughs> from the from the bed. So the maid Bridget, she wasn't feeling well, so she went to go take a nap in her room while Andrew laid on the little sofa in the sitting room. And within a short amount of time, Bridget said she heard Lizzie yelling, Maggie, come quick, father's dead. Someone came in and killed him. So Bridget goes into Among the Among Us. Bridget goes into <laughs> self report. Yeah. Who's the imposter? Yeah. Oh my god. Snitched on herself. That's <gasps> fucking scary yeah. though, dude. So yeah, Andrew was still off. in the position of laying down, but his face was a fucking mangled mess. Like he had been struck in the face with a hatchet eleven or twelve times. One of his eyeballs was chopped cleanly in half, which means like he was probably asleep when the blow yeah. landed. Um, and like, like his whole, I think it left, or left side of his face. And was, Abigail's just upstairs. Uh, he, but he doesn't know that. What are you, I'm just he saying, she's no still idea. dead? How many yes. hours passed? Like, like two. Okay. Two hours. Okay. Like, um, and, uh, since like he was still freshly bleeding when like, you know, Bridget came into the room and stuff like mm-hmm. the attack just happened. Mm-hmm. Um, his time of death was placed at like around 11 a.m. Um, and, and wasn't his like feet like still touching the floor like, yes. and everything? Like his feet he, are like, on the ground. It looks like he's just like like you know when you, like you sit down in a chair and you just lean the top of your body yeah like against was something. Was he sleeping in a chair? It was like a little it was sofa. like a like lounge like love. Why don't you uh, why don't you pull up some pictures yes. of the crime like, scene? Where did my phone go? I put it in my shoe. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, let's take a look at these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty gruesome. And we'll describe for the audio. Not really, because they're in black and white. But like, yeah, but yeah. Um, so in addition to calling the police, Bridget also summoned the family's doctor, Dr. Bowen, and the family friend, Alice Russell, who was a neighbor, too. 
Uh, the next door neighbor, Adelaide, Adelaide Churchill, was actually the first on the scene. And Adelaide and Bridget are the ones that discovered the body of Mrs. Borden. Um, let's see. Back, yeah, back then, like, crime scenes, like, they were not preserved. Like, like you know, people yeah. walk walk They're fucking ash and cigarettes. Yeah. The... It's just like, well, like, I want to see. What's what that? Is this? What's going on there? Flip the body over. Let's oh see God. what's under. Let's see what well, his like, face looks like. Abby's autopsy was done on the fucking I dining room table. I was going to say that. Yeah. Like, uh, Abby yeah. and Andrew, they were they just did the autopsy in like the fucking dining room. Like they fucking were like, just fucking who okay, let's go to the off. next room and figure out what happened. Like, That's crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, like God, premises? there's a good table right yeah. there. You know, waste not, want not. Yeah, what better what better location to, uh, to uh, if, you know, check a body out than like right next to where it was found, you know, in terms of autopsy. Right? Yeah, I... So, um, Chris, uh, this is um, Andrew Borden. Do you mind if I see this? Yep. Go right ahead. And I'll describe what I'm seeing. All right, so it looks like a very beautiful couch. Yeah. With, like, you very know, ornate. it can easily fit two to three people. Mm-hmm. It's kind of curly looking, like that classic vintage curly. Mm-hmm. You've probably seen a couch like this in games like Fallout, New Vegas. And the guy is slumped over. It looks like, yeah, he... Uh, maybe he was sleeping, and when he got struck the first time, he well, tried to stand up. Well, he and was maybe sleeping. he put his legs down. Well, because he was it wouldn't make Was he just. Because if he was sleeping with his feet on the floor, maybe he was like fell asleep sitting up and she caught him. But it almost looks like maybe he was with his feet on the couch. She struck him. He didn't. Obviously, didn't die right away. Maybe he tried to lunge off the couch and realized what happened, and then she finished him off. But, yeah, we're seeing a guy who's, like, sitting on the couch, feet on the floor, slouched to the left, and um, his face looks like hamburger meat. Yeah. It's pretty bad. It's fucking... He looks like he's having a Abby. bad day. Yeah, and this find is, the one of Abby. Yeah, is there a picture yep. of Abigail? There yep. is. And, like, she was hit so hard that, like, her braid was almost, like, severed. Like, cut Jesus. off. Like, like, it doesn't even look like there's a head oh in the God. Abby crime scene photos. She's... She's like like a child down on the floor. This like, looks like some haunting in Connecticut style. Like this looks ghostly, mm-hmm. and it could be like the washed out black and white. Yeah. But it's just a a woman who's face down, in a pile of wet because it's black and white. So it just looks like yeah, moist, yeah moisture, and uh, well, it's in front like, of like a beautiful like vanity. It could just kind of speaks that that era. Yeah, like, it's you can just tell in between exactly like what era the, it's from. The vanity and the bed. Mm-hmm. Um. But, like, when they found her body, like, her blood had already, like, started to, like, congeal and stuff. So, like, mm-hmm. she was already couple there hours. for a couple yeah. hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's see here. Uh, when the police got there, they noted that, you know, Lizzie remained, she was very calm, very composed, mm-hmm. and which is... Eager to little, talk to the press, like, te- like no, Bundy? No, not really, no. But, like, she... No, I'll talk to them. I'll talk to them. No. Mm-mm. Um... No, she was very calm. Mm-hmm. And normally women back then, they would have been all like, I got to take to my fainting couch. Mm-hmm. like Fanning themselves? Yeah. My fainting yeah. couch. I got to get one of those. For every, yeah, you should. I need, I'm, I'm is, due for an elegant this faint. This is just me playing mm-hmm. devil's advocate, though. But, like, everyone pro- processes, like, shock differently. No, yeah. of course. Like, I, I don't feel think like shock was invented yet. True. No, I'm kidding. Like, like the, just discovered. No, because because in this day and age, they, they would probably have been, like, fucking female hysteria or something like that. Yeah, but like, yeah, give this woman a lobotomy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the first suspect, though, was John Morse, Lizzie's uncle, who was staying mm-hmm. with them the night before. But, his but he al- wasn't there at the time. No, his alibi was like pretty much airtight. He was uh-huh. across town visiting cousins, and there were mm-hmm. witnesses of him being there. And so that was pretty much put to bed right there. Um, and Bridget, she was also dismissed as a um, suspect because... They're like, well, she doesn't really have a motive. Like, she's fine. But, but like, come, really? Like, didn't even really think, like, nah, she has no dog in this, right? She's not going to want to kill them. Like, why? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, I guess, not to dismiss, like, uh, put a pin in it, at least. Like, m- maybe put Whoever a, was put there, in, put a pin in it. Yeah. If you can't, like, definitely, like, rule her out, put her in the maybe file. Yeah. Exactly. Like, she ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Cause, no. Because, like, there, like, there's been so many cases, like, in the past where people just, like, snapped for no reason. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, back then, if you really were smart and you realize, like, it's hard to realize how much you, I guess, you could get away with back then, or I could be ignorant. Mm-hmm. But like, cause, you know, like, looking back now as a modern day guy, it's interesting. You know, like, mm-hmm. the whole blood wasn't really, you couldn't really test blood. You know, there's no corroboration. I mean, like, think about it. 
she could have left DNA at the scene. Like, because mm-hmm. when, yeah. when you're, like, operating a knife or something, especially when there's blood involved, people fail to realize how slippery things get. You cut yourself. Like, yeah. there's a lot uh-huh. of instances where people wind up cutting themselves while they're killing, <laughs> yeah. leaving right. their evidence at the scene. <clears throat> <clears throat> it, oh. Jeez. Some, what? Some, <laughs> what? No, was, what, what did I say? I, I thought you were going to... De- I thought something was developing. I thought you were like, ooh, <clears throat> I got something for that. No, you said cut <clears throat> fingers. <clears throat> oh. Wait, which is... OJ? Mm. Chris, <laughs> what? Stop. What am I doing? What, what are I we saying? saying? I'm so confused. That OJ killed his wife? What are we saying? <laughs> no, we, everyone knows it was his son. <laughs> yeah, both of them. Yeah. Is Damn. he going to sue me? Is he going to sue me? Probably. Listen, he if the glove fits. <gasps> oh my God. No. Uh, I don't even remember. Uh, I thought you were coughing because I was saying how like. I said, I want orange juice. Orange juice. That's what I want. Olive juice. Okay. Ol- olive, olive juice. Olive juice. Olive juice. Remember that? Olive juice. <laughs> Go watch right, the other I'm, sister. I'm probably going to actually cut all that out. No, you're fine. You're, but I'm, I, but I, I'm like, I was just going to... But I had a question. I was going to ask, like, mm-hmm. did she cut herself? Was she injured? Did that, they, no, did they I don't think her? so. No, they took a look at her. She looked spotless. But there's a theory. She looked good. There was a theory, there's a theory though, why she would be clean. Mm. Uh, let's see here. So police determined that, you know, if it was a you know, maybe a business enemy of Andrew that it doesn't really make sense for them to kill Abby first because it's not her. Like, you know. Um, Also, where would he have gone? Yeah. You know? Did we ever find out what she was laughing at? No. The fuck's so fucking funny? (laughs) There's been a body. She was thinking so, about funny little jokes. So basically, like, it was almost... Chicken like, crossed the road. It was, like, almost... Her side, man. For fuck's sake. me off every time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go on. The police, they determined that it, you know, if it was a business associate of Andrew's who was, like, an enemy, it doesn't really make sense that the wife would be killed first and, you know, all that. So they're, they kind of ignored that angle altogether. They're like, no, that can't... That's not really possible. And they also thought it was kind of unfathomable for a woman to commit such a heinous crime because like these like it was overkill. Like these mm-hmm. the first blow or two would have done the job, but the like it just It was like a something was going on. Yeah. Victorian times sexism. <laughs> Could be. Yeah, for sure. Well, no, think about it. I mean, it's not even just sexism. It's just the fact that majority of all violent well, crimes all ever were portrayed Well, we're all delicate flowers. We cannot pick up a heavy hatchet. But, yeah, but most... We poop even, flowers. But this, like, is, the, but this yeah. is the thing. It's like majority of all fucking violent crimes, crimes in general, are men. It's not Well, even they just, also said they're like women usually poison people. That's like yeah. kind of their... Which is kind of ironic considering they thought they were getting poisoned. Uh-huh. Because women tend to like go for like a way that would be like sure and direct whereas men are like I'm just gonna get a knife and yeah, hope for the best like, like let's just get it done what yeah. if her allowance was not enough to buy enough poison and that's why everyone just got sick so she no, had to take matters will, in her own hands I will get to the poison okay. in a, a mere moment Ooh. cause could they yeah I was like, okay I'll shut up okay yep so many questions alright so the funeral was on August 6th and the mayor actually informed Lizzie there that she was a suspect. And during the inquest with the judge, Lizzie was able to was unable to account for her whereabouts during the time the crimes took place. Like first, she's like, "Oh well, you know, I, mm, I think I was in the barn, you know, doing something over there." And then, or you know what, I actually I, I might have been outside doing something. Like she just it constantly changed. And yeah. they're like, well, "Like what are you doing?" But then they went into the barn and they're like, "No one's been in here. Like it looks mm-hmm. untouched for years." Um, and it does need to be said though that like while she was being questioned, she was also un- like she was given doses of morphine to try to keep her calm and all that because mm. you know yeah just, yeah because like she was acting a little sketchy. Um, the local pharmacist also stated during this that uh, Lizzie had gone to his drugstore not too long before the murders and was looking to buy a certain chemical um, that could either kill people or clean seal skin coats apparently like she's like i want to clean like a coat but like it was yeah. a common thing that yeah want to clean out your closet yes but uh she was refused he's like uh, you know what i'm not gonna sell that to you but good luck though because she was known around the town as like a, the troublemaker and everything, yeah they're like so. what the like, what is she up to yeah, like, like, yeah. F- well good on him yeah and uh his it, sixth sense was tingling <laughs> he's like mm, no i don't 
I don't feel right about that. Like, um, but in the basement, investigators found a broken hatchet that was, you know, determined to be a possible she murder broke weapon. It? Listen, it was uh, just basically like the just the top of the hatchet, like the whole like handle was yeah. gone. They don't they don't know where it went to. Um, Damn. And they also said that it was probably it looked fresh because the wood was like still very very like sharp Mm -hmm. and it looked like someone went to lengths to try to make the hatchet head appear like old like they put like ash on it and stuff like it was just it didn't make sense like they're like definitely "Mm." doctored yes so or like the or it was cleaned or something i don't Mm -hmm. know so lizzie was arrested on august 11th and at her arraignment the next day she pled not guilty but she had to be moved to a neighboring town because there weren't accommodations for female prisoners in Fall River. The town pretty much decided that she was guilty. Like, her town. Yeah. Because um, they knew her. They're like, yeah, she's, she was definitely weird. Something's funky. She's, yeah, something just doesn't sit right with us. Um, the only people that stuck by her, though, were her friends from the church and some feminist groups. Uh, the trial began on June 5th, 1893 in New Bedford, Massachusetts. And during the whole trial, she was perfectly calm and poised. And, you know, she, it was noted that, like, she, maybe she was, like, talking to her lawyer, kind of like, well, how, you know, how should I be reacting to this? How should I be reacting mm. to that? Like, she did, like, per, like swoon a couple times. Like, she was going to faint. But they're like, was she just pretending? No one knows. Um, she had, like, the best lawyers that money could buy. Um, well, now that her husband's dead, <laughs> no one's going to tell her how to spend her, her money. Her father. Her father. Yeah. Or oh, her husband didn't I? Lizzie? Yeah. Lizzie never married. Lizzie was never, never married. Who she married lived... the rich dick? The stepmom? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I got my fucking ducks like, all scrambled. Okay. The, the victims are the stepmom and her biological yes. father. Oh, wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but the testimony from the pharmacist was deemed inadmissible because there wasn't proof it occurred the day before the murders. And the, the types of crimes usually, like, if she was denied poison, why would she just, you know, do something so violent you know, mm-hmm. but it could happen. You yeah. know, it doesn't. Especially that, if they were starting to sense. suspect poison. Like if she, she could have thought her time was running out. She, yeah, she could mm-hmm. have been desperate. Who knows? Um, but neighbor and friend Alice Russell testified against Lizzie at the trial. She claims to have seen Lizzie burning a dress shortly after the murders because mm. it had paint on it. Oh, yeah. And but Lizzie did, in fact, change her dress before the police searched the house. But there's a theory that the bloody dress actually was probably underneath the new dress she put on because mm-hmm. back mm. then they're not going to go digging through a woman's things like that's just that was unheard of yeah because um because they're I, not going to look under her dress either yeah well i was point. reading um Who's th- I, well, I wouldn't even have fucking thought of that she's just wearing two dresses mm-hmm. well while, while i was reading for my section um there was like a secret compartment like in her dresser like that was perfect to like hide an axe or something and like the reason it was never found in the first place was because like even for police it was illegal to like look through like a woman's dresser because like it it's was like, like improper yeah they, they, have a they didn't want to be like to search the place they didn't want to be like coming across her like underwear and shit and being like touching her and oh, the yeah literally yeah, stay out like because what are these get off my bloomers yeah <laughs> <laughs> Take my bloomers down. Tis the times. Like, <laughs> do you wear boxers, briefs, or pantaloons? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the prosecution they had the bodies of Andrew and Abby Borden exhumed and their heads removed. The skulls were stripped of their flesh and brought into the courtroom, and they also <laughs> took the hatchet and placed it in the holes in the oh, skull wow. to try to show. You know, the jury and the audience and that, you know, this could most likely be the murder instrument. Mm-hmm. It's like the um, Ted Bundy teeth mark It's kind of disgusting, again. yeah. yeah. Um, the prosecution also put a call to action out to, like, uh, the Fall River neighborhood. They're like, hey, are any of you the ones that sent the letter, alleged, like, asking Abby to come visit with you because you said you were sick and nobody responded? So, like, Lizzie made that up. Really? Like, yeah, no, no, she's not home. She went to go visit a friend. Like, eh. no, it wasn't like it Emma who went to visit the friend, not Abby. No, Emma was already out visiting friends. But oh, yes. That's what Lizzie yes. told her. Yeah, Lizzie told her father because he's like, well, where's my wife? She's like, oh, um, one of her friends is sick. She went to go, you know, visit with them. But Oh, yeah. But she's she was upstairs, upstairs dead. You're yeah. dripping. Exactly. Uh, the trial lasted a little less than two weeks, and the defense 
uh, they only took a day to present, you know, oh, yeah. their case. Uh, the jury came back with a verdict after only ten minutes. Dude, you're fucked. I swear. No, no, no. They sat. They sat and waited for an hour though, because they didn't want to make it seem like their mind was already made up. And uh, she was found not guilty. Really? Yes. Yep. She's Lizzie. probably fucking. Oh, she's yes. probably feeling good. She, she's punching the air. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I fucking knew it. Oh, Let's I knew go. It. <laughs> fucking high five in our lawyers. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Chest bumping. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like oh. Why is it so cushioned? I'm wearing two dresses. <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry. It's, the, it's the extra dress. I'm sweating. So hot here. <laughs> okay. So I'm just uh, sweating because I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, it's just, definitely not the extra dress. Just, that's all the, all the lanterns. <laughs> so hot in here. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so yeah, Lizzie, like she wept, you know, tears of joy, and the whole outside was cheering her on, and they were super excited for her. But once she returned home to Fall River. She was kind of ostracized by, you know, all of society. Mm-hmm. Like, no, we're not going to hang out with her. Mob like, mentality. The yeah. The registered axe offender. Yeah. <laughs> For, yeah. <laughs> well, she would have to register a new address because shortly after, her and Emma moved into a nicer house. They bought mm-hmm. a new home in, like, the hill section of Fall River where they wanted to live originally. Mm-hmm. And they named it Maplecroft. And not too long after moving out together... The two sisters had a falling out and they never spoke again. So, who knows what that was about? Oh, I think she admitted. Ugh, I don't know. But, I think he uh, told her. yeah, after suffering with gallbladder issues and pneumonia, Lizzie Borden died on June 1st, 1927, in Fall River at the age of 66. Her sister Emma died on June 10th, 1927. And both sisters, they were never married and are buried next to each other in a Fall River cemetery. They left her estate to the Fall River Animal Rescue League. What a queen. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm going to take care so of this So this bitch got off? She got off, yeah. I do. Okay. This is what we got to do yep. next time. Is when you guys ask me what I know, uh-huh. you got to ask me what I think, like... What the was, outcome was? Yes. Because okay. I would have told you that she got hanged. Really? I fucking ha- I thought oh, she that I thought so she funny. went to jail. If I you... thought it was fucking everyone knew she did it. Yeah. Well, That's nuts. Yeah, Lizzie Borden took an axe. She gave her father the 40 wax. Facelift. No, I, it, it was the gave her mother 40 wax when gave... she saw what she had done. She oh, I love like wow. cryptic little nursery rhymes like yeah. that. Yeah, that that was a but, Fuck, like, but one, the number two, of wax Freddy's is like uh, but the number of like wax is Incorrect. It's, it's, wait, it's glorified. Wait, yeah, yeah. But like, how many wax was it? Um, like, probably doesn't roll off the tongue in the enough. song. Enough. Yeah. yeah. Seventeen wax. The, the, mo- the stepmother. It was like nineteen in yeah. total, and, and the then father Andrew was, was like, like 12, eleven or, or something. Or 12, yeah. Fuck. Um, yeah. and then there was a song, like like a piano song made by someone in 1961, and mm-hmm. and um, it was titled. Something along the lines of "You can't chop your papa up in Massachusetts," and it was like a jazz song. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can that. Sure. <laughs> Dizzy Gillespie. Yeah. 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 I can't believe she. But got there's off. also like many, like a little side note that I was gonna add with like theories, real quick. I love those. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the theories, as far as a motive goes, some people say that maybe she was caught in bed with the maid. Bridget. Oh, Munchin? Yeah. Okay. And she's like, uh, Slower. can't have that. What? I'm kidding. Stop it. <laughs> Jesus. She's, she's oh, like, I can't, you know. And then another one was also like, maybe her father, you know, was like sexually assaulting the maid or something. And she, you know, well, I took saw it upon one, herself to take him out. I saw one that like, um, Emma and Lizzie had like an incestuous relationship, and like I they have never they, heard that. Hence, why they never they, married. Like, and they like hatched the plan together. What? So like, so Abby would so Abby would be killed first, mm-hmm. so that so that the inheritance would solidify in Andrew's name. Yes, and then, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing I meant to. I and then like, to say too. And then um, so because then, if it was Andrew first, all of his whole estate would have went to Abby's family and not the mm-hmm. girls. Mm-hmm. So get rid of. So that's Abby's why family. we had to get rid of Abby first. Yep. Yes. So then Andrew was killed, so that the inheritance could be switched over to Lizzie and Emma and the then oldest. they would use that money to buy Maplecroft and then they probably like had an argument about something else that caused mm. the falling out mm-hmm. later on. Yeah, and another theory also as to why um Lizzie was so clean is that she did the attacks naked. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Just like, mm, we're just gonna strip down and just, you know. Fucking sleepaway camp style? Yeah. Yeah. Just bash some faces in. Oh my god. And also, he had like a really long, like, duster coat that was on the the couch with him. They're like, maybe she put that on as like, like a, a rain coat. Yeah. Yeah. Like a yeah. totally American side. There's all those newspapers. Yeah. He got a she dog. She put on some Huey Lewis. No, Alan. News. Yeah. Is that a rain coat? <laughs> yes, it <laughs> is. Oh my god. <laughs> That's uh, fu- I mean, that's so a good. That I mean, is the story of Lizzie Borden, but there's also some other things that yeah. are tied to her name. So mm. we're gonna time travel all the way to 1996, and under ownership of Martha McGinn, the Lizzie Borden house began operating as a bed and breakfast. Nice. Is it after? Yes. Oh, way, okay. Way after. Nin- this is in the 90s. Okay. Yes. Um. McGinn inherited the house from her grandparents who purchased the home in August of 1948. According to McGinn, the room where Abby Borden was murdered is the most requested room to stay in for tourists. The Fall River Historical Society pro- promotes the house as a tourist attraction as well. Mm. Um, the house is also said to be haunted by the ghosts of the Borden family, with Andrew Borden's ghosts being the most, the most active. His heavy footsteps can be heard in the hallways and the master bedroom of the house. And he's even been spotted facing through closed doors, walking from room to room. Fuck off. <laughs> Most No. <laughs> Most of the activity in the house is al- allegedly occurs in the downstairs parlor where he was killed. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine just peeking down the stairs of that room. Mm-hmm. You could sit in that Fuck. chair in that spot. Yeah. And like, like take like, a picture of yourself like in yeah the no yeah people do that all the and, time and, and, and you like, animals and, and on the couch there's like an axe like where his body was yeah yeah just leave him lying around now like, you know, <laughs> leave him yeah. lying the fuck around mm. like like there's people taking pictures with like the axe in their <laughs> hand and like slumped over like he like, was oh, this like this horrible my... thing happened to someone let's take a picture oh my god but, I mean I guess it's like for the gram but I pers- <laughs> I'm I don't know. I'm yeah. not a very big spiritual guy. I guess I you am. You feel like it's like a just bad juju. I, mean, I don't know what that like, is. I don't even know how to it's describe just icky. that. It's just icky. Yeah. It yeah. It's not right. It's like... Just leaves a bad dude. taste in your mouth. See, I'll do yeah. like the shape of a, a chalk outline, uh-huh. but that's anyone. It's yeah. just a guy. It's just a chalk guy. <laughs> Would you sit on and that that's couch? that's something that's like so trivial where it's like, haha, LOL. Who's Piper. Hurting? Would you sit on that couch? I feel like I would, but I wouldn't like... Glorify it, like slump over. I'll like tell you right was. now, I would I, get on that fucking couch. I, I'd, like, I'd probably sit at the edge like a nervous girl at a guy's house. I, I'd, just I'd, sitting I'd on the edge of the bed, hands in the laps, like. It, it, it looks comfy. I would. That's the whole thing. Yeah, I would. Have, yeah, I'd get on there. Like, 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 I understand why he took a nap on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get it. yeah, I'm like a cat. I can nap anywhere. Yeah, just, literally, just curl right up. <laughs> um. So. Uh, McGinn, who also grew up in the house, reports that she experienced a lot of activity in her years of living there. She said she heard footsteps and the sound of marbles being played with on the floor. Another experience she had was that she saw a window being violently swung open and slamming shut. Like, Rained. Like, solved. Yeah. A window being Easy. cleaned. Give me a hard she, one. She also saw one time a, sh- a shadow of a Victorian woman in Victorian clothes floating four inches above the floor. <sighs> An employee... Blair Witch Pro- I'm sorry, Blair Witch- <laughs> One of the details in the Blair Witch Project that scares me to this day uh-huh. is mm-hmm. when the guy's talking about how he doesn't really know the story, but he's, oh, he's heard about an old woman whose feet never touched the ground. That is so that scary. Is, that is enough to keep me awake that is, forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck. I, I can feel, my, like, I feel the chills. I, f- I can feel them. Mm-hmm. That shit's like, fuck. I don't know why it is. Yeah. I'm a grown-ass man. Mm-hmm. Ghosts just do something to they me. They make it's your the eyes fear of the unknown. They do. I know. I don't know what I've that seen is. It. It's the fear of the unknown. It makes them cry. <sighs> you fear what you don't understand. Yeah. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, an employee at the bed and breakfast, Carrie Roderick, said that while she was tidying up one of the rooms, it was the last room that she had to do. She turned to see the perfect imprint of someone laying on the bed, but no one was there. Um, like the like the pillow was like like, yeah, it, like indented it, like indented like like a head was there oh, yeah. and everything. Um, I looked at it for a couple of seconds and then I booked it out of the room. I had to leave. It scared me because I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. She said. Mm-hmm. 
Abby Borden's ghost is seen to be going throughout the house doing her chores before ending in the guest room where she was killed. She is mistaken to be the bed and breakfast host or a maid because of this. Visitors say she is she visitors. (laughs) 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 You think it's the fucking lady? Yeah, like it's like, but it's oh, yo, can I get some uh, K cups for the and then no one's there? Yeah, (laughs) like oh my god, dude. Um, she turns, yeah, she looks normal, but but from behind, it's all. Like, like, yeah, like, like, it's like, it's like fucking Ghostbusters librarian no, it's like, ghost. It's like uh, the sixth sense. Like, do you want to see where my dad keeps his gun? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, ah! Fuck, man. Um, Sorry. That was- no, seriously. It's like that. That's horrifying. Uh huh. Yeah. You think it's a guy. Chris is like full on crying right now. His it's I don't know, it's like a reaction that I get. I know. Um, is anybody, have you ever seen this with anyone else? My mom, it happens to my mom too. I've never seen that before. His well, eyes well up I get with tears. Snotty. I get snotty. When he's scared. When there's it's a ghost weird. story, it's just it's like, it's like mo- it's only fucking ghosts, really. Mm-hmm. I don't I get, like cri- when I see like cryptids or Wendigos, I'm like, mm-hmm. ah. Well, I guess worse with her ghost because visitors say they have felt bed sheets tighten around them and a, and then a faint brushing noise as if someone is smoothing out the sheets, like and they feel it most towards like their legs and Leave their them chest rough. area. What? They, what? Like the, like they the fe- sheets smooth them out? Like, yeah, they, them they, they feel like the, they they feel like the <laughs> smoothing like most towards their legs and their chest area like 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 a mother like tucking their child into bed basically yeah and then um sharing like, him kiss you on the so lips. it's like, like this. good night son <laughs> <laughs> so this is like a- alleged to be like abby making the bed and mm-hmm. everything um abby borden's autopsy was performed right on the dining room table like we said so guests report hearing abby's pained moans in the dining room Mm. What do they say? Does anybody have like? What do they sound like? Just like, like whoa. Probably like that. Whoa. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> um. Ow. Stop. <laughs> Holy fucker. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> I already got an axe through my head. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Liz. Lizzie's ghost is said to haunt two locations in Fall River. Mm -hmm. Um, First, of course, being the house. And then second of all, the uh, Central Congregational Church where she taught Sunday school. Um, She also does haunt the Maplecroft house. mm -hmm. Where she probably died, right? That's probably where she died. That is where she died. The sister moved out. Did Mm -hmm. she? Mm -hmm. But she stayed. Mm -hmm. Because that's Mm -hmm. just what she wanted all along. She wanted the house on the hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So... um, in the house, however, guests in the room next to Lizzie say that they awake at the same time every night, and it's around 3 a.m., and they hear crying on the other side of the wall, which is Lizzie's room. Um, and guests not only hear crying, but they hear other disembodied voices from Lizzie's room. Um, and a husband and wife stayed in the house one time, and the wife fell asleep on the parlor uh, in the parlor after a long day of cleaning. At 3 a.m., she woke up and thought, th- and through the parlor door of the house, she saw the grand staircase where there was movement. There was a shadow on the wall that didn't match the other shadows. It didn't look like any of the objects hanging on the wall or anything. Um, and it swayed for a moment before slowly ascending the stairs, only to disappear at the top of the stairs. The wife thinks that the spirit was Lizzie walking up the stairs to kill her stepmother. Oof. Yep. And one tour guide report, reported a tall, dark figure in the basement uh, basement and upstairs of the house, but the figure was described as more of a large mass than human-like. Um, and EVP sessions have the following words pop up a lot. Justice, Lizzie, Borden, Hatchet, when asked what the murder weapon was, and Axe. Mm-hmm. People say that Andrew and Abby's ghosts are trying to reach out to the living and tell them who killed them, seemingly trying to put the story to rest. Yeah. Like some Stir of Echoes shit. You ever see that with Kevin Bacon? I did, mm-hmm. like a long time ago. Um, you see this? <laughs> you're crying. Are you crying? Fuck. He's crying. Oh, no. Um, I'm you fine. Can, you, uh, you can uh, stay overnight in the Borden house. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's a really long wait list, so we should probably get our names on it soon. Yes, we should. I, like, li- here's the thing. I don't think that I am the type to run, mm-hmm. but 
I I'm going to have a in, visceral reaction. I think you're gonna just lay in the bed, I, just crying, just sobbing. I I think I probably <laughs> my my vocabulary would definitely diminish to about three different words. <laughs> and uh, I I just can't imagine like just here. I don't, I don't know why that is. Is there? Is it like a genetic know. memory thing? Is it like a Puerto Rican thing? I don't <laughs> know. But like I've seen shows too where like these like psychic kids went to the warden house to. Um, see what they can feel I've seen and that shit. a lot of them all came back with the same thing they're like it wasn't her mm-hmm. she didn't do it lizzie yeah they're like she really? didn't do it they all said it's a fucking kid what do they know but they all had the same reaction feeling mm-hmm. that it was they said it was the uncle the one who and we're, okay so going not to like dig this back up because i know piper's still got his hair piece so who went downstairs to let the uncle in? Nobody. He didn't. Was he the wasn't uncle home. ever there? Yes. The mm-hmm. uncle came the day before the murders. Okay. And where like, was he the he, day of the murders? The day of the murders. Like he got, when he got up in the morning, uh-huh. they had breakfast. He had like a chat with Andrew and then he left to go visit family and to buy mm-hmm. some, some oxen. Was he ever a person of interest? Yes. Mm-hmm. And he was he, the first but, one. But he had an alibi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was his alibi? Just the that fact he that, was with other family. But did he go? Did he have like a Red Robin receipt or like did, did he go to <laughs> CVS? <laughs> yeah, he went to CVS. Yeah, he got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he went, he bought a pack of gum. So at, then, oh, yeah. how would it have been him unless? Because this is the thing. I mean, like he doesn't like as long as he showed up at the family friends at least once, he could have done all that before then. Because you said it very now, well could have been him. Two I people don't were know. murdered, right? Yeah. In a within a two hour span of each other. Yeah. So I mean that's but not how a lot of time. would he? How would the uncle have slipped out of the house after killing um, Andrew? Well, were the windows? I mean, were the windows dead bolted? Because you got to be bloody and everything. I mean, I this, what if this bitch opened I, one of the windows already because she was cleaning them? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know? Yeah. So because uh, that's my thing is like there's a lot he, of he information still out there. Like mm-hmm. I'm not a historian or anything, so I just gave you guys what you yeah. needed to but I'm saying understand he's still... the story, but. I don't know. In my gut, I think it's Lizzie. Mm-hmm. Like, was there cars back then or no? No. Do you think he had a car? Like her um, status? No. No, because she even had, like, after they moved out and, like, she bought the new house, she had, um, she had, like, she had, like, four or five maids. She also had, um, what was her means like of transportation? Footman. She yeah. had, like, carriage. With horses. Um, yeah. and, like, oh, and, like, a lot of people who like practice law like nowadays and everything when they look at the case they say that if this case happened in modern day Lizzie would have most definitely been convicted convicted mm-hmm. yeah so uh so like and like one of the big theories as to why she was found innocent was because again sexism at the time and like they believed like oh a woman couldn't do something as violent yeah. as this and, and especially she, and she probably knew that well and, and used yeah. the and used that to her advantage um but yeah my sources were wikipedia the paranormal.net ghostwalks.com unsolved mysteries fandom wikipedia and the haunted journal and I'm bringing back a little segment from old time's sake mm. for on this day in true crime history. This day. Oof. Susan Smith, who murdered her two children, was arrested. That was not real. That was my foot. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, uh, I swear. So on this day in true crime, Susan Smith. So on this day in true crime history, uh, mm-hmm. Susan Smith, who murdered her, t- her two children, was arrested. Do you know that story? Is it the drowning? Yeah, she drove the kids. I thought the there were three kids. There was two kids. Well, she, this is not the first time someone's drowned the fucking kids. Uh, obviously. Have you seen Inception? No. Oh, it's uh, fucked. I have. Okay. Well, um, the, remember, the but, wife thinks that like, everyone's still oh, dreaming, so she tries to wake her also, kids up. My sources were Biography Channel and Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Sounds chill. Yes. I want to go to the house Me so too. bad. I've always wanted to. My mom says she wouldn't stay there, but I would. I would. Literally. Let's do it. Yes. Let's do it. Do you want? Do you want to come with us, Chris? We can each. We can all get a bedroom. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. spread out. Let's spread out. <laughs> you can invite Rib. He could just spoon you and keep you safe from Mrs. Borden's wandering hands. He's gonna hands. fork me. You, you, you <laughs> guys. Yeah. You guys could stay in the attic where Bridget stayed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stay in the guest bedroom where Abby was attacked. You could stay in Lizzie's room. Sure. Lizzie. L- Lizzie's room sounds fun. I don't even. <laughs> I, after watching Bo is Afraid, I think I'm gonna. Yeah. 
stay away from addicts for, for a little bit. You got to watch that fucking movie. Okay. I'm telling you, you got to watch that movie. Yeah. Oh, but geez. now with the Susan Smith, did she, was she she was found guilty, right? Yeah, she she's still at least in jail. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's still in jail. Mm-hmm. I, I think she has a life sentence now. Uh, yeah. Yes. She should have two. She drove. Yeah, the kids were like in car seats, and she just like oh drove the car like off yeah. the ramp into like the a lake. So I'm probably thinking of the the case. I think it was four kids. This lady fucking Diane down. Downs. No, for- Diane Downs. She shot the kids. In the car, like she was driving. I'm thinking about this is like Andrea a bathtub Yates? thing. Andrea Yates. Maybe yeah. she drowned her. She five drowned her kids. kids in the bathtub. Five. Five yeah. of them. The oldest was like six. Or Twenty-seven. Seven. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! no. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. how much was how old? She seven. Old enough to like it would have been really difficult. Well, well, that was like a severe like postpartum depression psychosis. diagnosis. No, it was postpartum psychosis, yeah. and they told her like stop having kids, and she kept 